Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. This is going to be season 34, war number seven. And on this one, I have to give a huge shout out to Nerd, who has a YouTube channel of the name Hyena. Nerd is one of the officers in SSX and he is the BG leader, the planner, does the defense, everything for BG2. I personally had a conflict with work today and was not able to plan BG1. And so he did our plan for us in addition to planning BG2. So unbelievable work by this young gentleman. And I was eternally grateful because I just, it would have been like 8 p.m. before I got this plan out. Um, and I would have just been completely stressed. Uh, but he did give me a pretty fun war. We're going to see some Spider-Man 2099. And first time of the season that I got to bring Mole Man. And we're going to see how Mole Dude uh, does against the tactic. Against this long shot. Um, made a little mistake. Uh, because I threw that L2 and it didn't kill him, it gave him pure of hearts. And obviously if I missed the decks of the special one, I would have gotten those nasty instant bleeds. Or if I accidentally pushed him to a special two, I could have gotten the incinerates out of the air. So in general, I probably could have slow played that a little bit better so that he never got pure of heart. But because we don't proc buffs, mystic dispersion wasn't ever an issue. He wasn't gaining extra power and we just basically nuked him down. It wasn't much of an issue. The node itself didn't come into play at all, nor did the power gain. So here we go. I've been taking node 26 a lot this season because I usually fit onto the right side, and we're gonna see how this works with Sasquatch. So I had to formulate a strategy here because I'm used to Apocalypse, who is immune to Disorient. Uh, so my goal is to land a heavy attack at some point to get the exhaustion on. So what I do is wait for window of opportunity stun and then um, make sure that we keep dexing to keep our wither up. I do get that one disorient on me, but it was a safe time to parry. And to me, it was worth just getting that one blocked hit so that I could very easily land an exhaustion. Um, you know, if this were the boss node, I would try to bait a heavy a little bit more cleverly, but because parry is allowed and that um, disorient only lasts for a short time, it's not the end of the world. Um, so we've only hit Sasquatch uh, three times. Now we've, we're getting close to 10 combo and he's already well under halfway health. This is just Spider-Man 2099 in a nutshell. You dex, you hit their block, you just trust your ruptures. And anytime they go over a bar of power, the rank four is going to be doing an insane amount of damage with that rupture burst. Now he does have a little bit of healing off of his SIG ability, but we have so many debuffs that Despair Mastery is pretty much blunting it and he goes down like nothing. So the only thing you have to worry about on that fight against Sasquatch is obviously if you um, block the special one, you could get stunned. If you take too many blocked hits, the disorient is really going to hurt through the block. And then additionally, you cannot parry when window of opportunity stun is around because then you will get stun reflected and have a very bad time. So yeah, as long as you watch out for that stuff, uh, he goes down absolutely fine. In the previous war, I soloed this fight, so we are back at it against Domino. Domino did cause a death for me early in the season, but it was on the node after this one. It was on 43, and in my opinion, 33, the one with Spite and Rise to Power, is a much safer spot to actually use Spider-Man 2099. I do think if she's on the next node, you want to be sending a tech champ that will never go unlucky. Um, but here we do a little fancy dex there. Now we have to watch out for lucky. We always need to watch out for unlucky as well because it means we will not be able to dex. So right there, um, we basically just ran right into the unlucky. I accidentally dexed and got caught, used the invulnerable. So now we do not have a safety net. She is very high on power. She very graciously throws that special two, and now I feel like the fight is back under control. We're unlucky again, so we're just kind of blocking. I don't want to be dexing and getting caught. Her lucky is gone. We very safely throw our wither again. Um, again, we're getting unlucky every time, so that's the real danger in this fight, getting caught by a dex, getting caught by a special attack when you're unlucky. 
Uh, but other than that, she goes down fine. We take a little bit of critical failure damage and that will be the end of that. So yeah, Domino, never fun to fight if you don't have a tech champion or someone who's immune to ability accuracy. Um, but when it's something like Spite and Rise to Power, you just trust in your favorite attacker, Spider-Man 2099, and go for it. Now, I am very low on boosts this season. Um, just the nature of the amount of units I have and the way I am playing the game and spending my units and things like that. So I am actually compensating for the fact that my boosting is not gonna be like the 30% boost that often by using the units that I have for mastery swaps when they are appropriate. So for this fight, I am turning on recoil and you know liquid courage and double edge because it's going to make Mole Man hit so much harder. But what I wanna show you in this fight is how you can use Mole Man to um, deal with this global. So we're gonna start by parry heavy a little bit. We do not need our true accuracy because he's not gonna be able to evade in this fight um, because he's not gonna be fulfilling his missions. But right there, we intercept, we proc, the mystic dispersion because our unstoppable goes away but then if you notice i went back and we intercepted with one more of those counter punch charges and that counts as an intercept which turns off mystic dispersion and because we're running recoil you know our guaranteed crits and our bleeds are just smacking that guy down he doesn't have that much health and before anything got out of hand or in danger with the aspect of evolution or the mystic dispersion he's just dead so that's why you know for me changing the masteries was important there because it turned what could be a slightly sketchy fight on aspect of evolution with the tactic um, with someone who doesn't have defiance into like a 30 second fight you know so that's why you do change your masteries when you can and you know the fight might have looked different if we had 60 percent less damage i'll put it that way and now on this fight, I have to say I was a little nervous about this one um, because, again, it has Aspect of Evolution and the AI of Mordo is manipulated by his power gain charge. And it's really kind of a formula for the Wither to fall off if you're not aggressive enough. And then additionally, we don't have like a House of X pre-fight or anything, so we're not going to be able to parry him and hit. Uh, so to me, it's very important to either have him not go passive um, right there. Oof, we just got parried. So we just used our indestructible, <laughs> which means um, we have no safety net if he gets to his special three. So now it's even more important that we keep this wither up no matter what. Um, so dexing is going to be our friend because if this wither falls off, then we do not have any power control. But fortunately, because we have class advantage and everything, um, man, he just ended up killing himself with that rupture burst. So... Yeah, started off a little sketch. We dashed in um, at an unsafe time. We got parried. Uh, but as long as you keep those dexes up, as long as you keep the wither up, it's going to turn off his own power gain. It's also going to turn off the entire rich get richer node. And then um, you are going to be able to just stack your withers and get him down no issues. So that worked out great. Very happy about that one. And next up, we have Mangog on 54, uh, which is a very common placement, of course. We've already seen it three or four times this season. Um, and I think I get hit in this one. Uh, we'll see what happens. But the, the name of this game, of course, is um, Dexing. Uh, because he has the improved power gain, he is gaining power still, even though we're reversing it by like 140% right now or so. Um, but as long as he throws an L1, everything's fine. So he throws the L1, uh, we get another wither on us, and now just take a look at his power bar. We're pretty much stopping the power gain. I think because of Aspect of Evolution, it's not being reversed. Um, I'm not 100% clear on how the math works, but I do know that generally speaking, when you get the two withers up on this node, the node is pretty much shut down even if there's additional manipulation of his power. Um, so we are gonna have these 20 um, ruptures up and I think the name of the game of course is to keep dexing, but if he crosses a bar of power, it's gonna do a massive burst of damage, which is what we like to see. So we are gonna push him right there. You can see rupture burst, very nice. 
Now, I did make some mistakes in this fight because I ended some of my combos in five hit combos. And by doing that, I actually fed him some of his rage charges. Uh, so that was my error. But even so, he didn't get to the enraged state. Um, if he did, we would have to deal with that by like intercepting with a special or waiting out the unstoppable. But fortunately, didn't come to that. He does go down pretty quickly when you have a rank four Spider-Man 2099. And I did keep this part in just to once again showcase that we're being very conscious about mastery swaps to really set ourselves up to be as strong as we can against certain nodes. This is my first time taking Super Scroll Boss. And when it comes to Super Scroll, we are very much turning off the entire node of Mystic Dispersion. Uh, we are also hopefully going to be able to reverse any power gain debuffs that he gets, um, which, you know, if he's low sig, those don't really make a big impact. Uh, but either way, it's good to know that he's not going to accidentally get up to two bars of power as long as we keep that wither up. And because we are running the entire uh, suicide tree, we're going to be able to just heal all fights uh, just because of the way that Spider-Man 2099 works against the bosses and the true strike. So we let some of our wither die down there. Um, so we just want to make sure that we, we continue to dex, we continue to hit the block. Now, a lot of people really like the Scorpion synergy because it allows you to get your ruptures up even faster. But here's the thing. When you have a SIG 200 Spider-Man 2099, you're going to be easily getting up to 20 ruptures in no time in a fight like this. And also because of the SIG, when they burst, they don't fall off as fast. So I think it's a little less essential to need to rely on that. But certainly if you have an unawakened Miguel, that scorpion synergy really really comes in handy but for ours we don't really have to worry about it the only thing that is slightly scary about this fight is if he goes unblockable um, but in general we're not going to let that happen just because we're mostly looking at keeping his armors up as opposed to him getting furies and then him converting those into armors if that makes sense and then we just need to watch out for the falter uh, obviously, if we take a combo, we're not going to die. I think the only thing that can kill uh, Spider-Man 2099 here is if you take an unblockable special two with Nova Fists on or something, um, which for that all to line up, you would have to play terribly. So fortunately, that doesn't happen right here. Cancel with a blocked hit. Also get the rupture burst, um, we get rid of that falter. So now I'm like, okay, probably don't have to worry about falter for the rest of the fight. Uh, we're about two minutes in and we're very close to the end of this fight. As tempting as it is to throw the special one to try to finish him, I do highly recommend only using special twos. I've gotten in trouble because the special one doesn't hit that hard before, so we just finish him with combos and ruptures and everything and he goes down. So once again, big thank you to Nerd who helped us plan this war. Uh, it was very, very helpful to have that um, The war. Uh, for me, it went pretty well. I got to use Mole Man for the first time and just another array of some of the most common Spider-Man 2099 fights. So certainly by the end of this season, there will be like a pretty big catalog of sort of all the big fights that he's able to take for Mystic Dispersion. Um, definitely check out the channel for some of the earlier wars if you want to see some of the other common placements including a Sasquatch boss and things like that. So thanks for checking out the video, everybody, and I will catch you in the next one.